until a coherent and effective strategy for dealing with Islamic extremists becomes official U.S. policy. Trump said, we're looking for the next General Patton. We're looking for the next General Douglas MacArthur. When you look at West Point, Annapolis, and the Air Force Academy, we have unbelievably smart, tough cookies in there. We're not using them, Trump told Savage, regarding one aspect of Obama's anti-terror policy. Savage asked if a Trump administration would consider our Kansas Senator Tom Cotton and his defense secretary, to which Trump replied, I think it makes sense. When you're dealing with the military, you should certainly have a military person, close quote. Cotton, Savage said, is a war veteran who deployed to Baghdad as a platoon leader with the 101st Airborne Division in 06. He also deployed to Afghanistan in 08. Trump said, we now need a toughness and we need a competence or we're not going to have a country left. Now, you know, I want to stop right there. This is what we should be talking about, which are Trump's ideas. Many of you don't understand his ideas. You're focused only on what Ted Cruz has told you to focus on. Oh, he's a liberal. 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 That didn't sound too liberal to me. How come you didn't hear any of this? Because your mind was made up. Because you're exactly what you say your enemies are. You have closed minds, and your mind is made up. So don't tell yourself you're better because you're a so-called conservative. Your mind is the same as the liberal. You didn't hear a word that Trump said. He has the only plan I know of that would actually work to stop ISIS, to stop the flood of immigrants. He listens, and he learns. I brought the idea. I brought up the idea, and he said it sounds like a good idea to me. He said that. He said, it sounds like a good idea to me. He listened to me. How many people listen to anyone at all, never mind people in the media? So that's a big story. It's the underlying story. It's what Trump really said. You hear? And now they're attacking him as an egotist and a coward. That's nonsense. Just total nonsense. Trump spoke the truth about the military and about the so-called refugees, about the death of Europe. And by the way, Trump is the last chance to save what's left of America. Otherwise, it's going to be a fight to the last man in this country. And our elected cowards, cowards are just like the Indian chiefs who sold out the Indian tribes. I will say it again because I've said it for over 15 years. What we have in Washington, I don't care who they are. I don't care what designation follows their name, R, D, S, doesn't matter. They are the Indian chiefs who sold out the tribes for a bottle of a couple of cases of booze and repeating rifles. They're no different. They're called Congress and the Senate. There are a few good men. Pay close attention. I'll be back. We have a news report that the murderer of uh, the... Oregon standoff spokesman Robert Finnicum was an Oregon State Police trooper who I, I'm demanding an investigation. I'm demanding the Attorney General send a federal task force into Oregon to find out who shot this man in cold blood. They killed him in cold blood. A 55-year-old peace-loving man with 11 children was executed yesterday by an Oregon State policeman. His name was Robert Finnicum. We're going to talk about that. A Swedish official wants to use taxpayer funds to help ISIS soldiers come home. I couldn't make this up. There's no way to even invent this about liberalism being a mental disorder. A far left, far left, Sweden is all far left. A maniac wants to help ISIS warriors returning to Sweden reintegrate with society. And they want normal Swedes to pay for it. A Swedish moron wants ISIS soldiers to come back to jobs and job counseling instead of executing them. Talk about that. What did I tell you would happen in Germany? Instead of banning the Muslim fanatics who are raping their way across Germany, Merkel's Germany, Germany has banned far-right internet platform arresting too. I told you this would happen, and I told you it's going to happen here. The fascists on the left are the new Nazis under the guise of being pacifists and liberals. So they're banning right-wing sites in Germany, not bear, uh, banning the uh, rapists. And here's a good piece of news. I wish Putin was our president. Russia is hunts for pilots killer in Syria-Turkey border town. Seeking revenge, Russian forces stormed the Syrian town on the border with Turkey, hunting for the attacker who claimed he shot and killed a pilot of a downed Russian jet, state media reported Monday. Remember there was a Turkish F-16 fighter jet shot down a while back? near the Turkish border north of Latakia on November 24th. Well, soon afterwards, a Turkish city, a citizen said in a video that he killed a pilot on the ground. 
He took credit for it. He boasted about it. He killed him. Well, guess what? Obama's not the president of Russia. Putin is, and he remembers his troops. He supports his troops. They have now taken over that Turkish town. And Putin's government said, we will never forget what he did to this pilot. And they're looking to take revenge. And they've sent in special forces. And let me tell you something about the Spesnats. They're not a bunch of ladies from Obama's military. They're going to find this man. What they will do with him, I don't know. But they're going to bring to justice or kill the Turk who murdered the Russian pilot on the ground. Those are some of the other stories we're going to cover on the Savage Nation. Quick call, Ann on WABC. Go ahead, please. Hi, Mike. Quick call, yes. Uh, God bless you and everything that you do. And uh, let me tell you about this little war on Trump. It all began with Megyn Kelly's ridiculous question at the first debate. It, is, it has evolved now into what I call a conservative test. And you know what? He called Ted Cruz nasty. So now every conservative that I have ever believed in has turned on Donald Trump. And now it's an all-out war on Donald Trump. It is post after post. It is ridiculous. Statement after statement. It wasn't enough, and I've been keeping track because I love Megyn Kelly. I've, watching, I've been watching her. Well, she made a name for herself by attacking him. I called it a foul ball the day she did it. She turned all of the others against him. She is what she is. She's just a media hound, a media uh, type personality. That's all. She's an entertainer. She did what she had to do for ratings. But the, the shock here is that the Republicans, instead of turning it on her and saying, we're not going to take the bait, jumped down Trump's throat. They should have said, we're not going to take the bait, Megan. OK, let's talk about Hillary Clinton's emails. Let's talk about the Benghazi murders. Let's talk about Bernie Sanders' communist background, Megan. We're not going to take the bait, Megan. That's what they should have said. But they're not me. They're not smart enough to be me. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So it's very interesting. I, I'm looking at the World Net Daily article about my interview with Donald Trump, which got no posting anywhere. Drudge didn't link it. No one touched it because I'm not a member of the, uh, of the, of the cartel. And I'm looking at the article and looking at the uh, comments that people make. People are very smart. And someone analyzed Donald Trump's speech and speech methodology. He's very smart, this man, I-O-F-H-U-A. I don't know, if Hoa, if Hoa, I, I don't know what it is. And he wrote this. He said, I'm noticing that Trump's speeches is that he's using short, broken sentences that look like they could have come from a cell phone text message, such as, I'm going to send them back. They have to go back. We have no idea where these people came from. They're young, they're strong, and in many cases, they're men. When you look at the migratory lines, when you look at the big migration, there are so many men, so many strong men. We have no choice. We have a country that's a mess, close quote. So the man says, most of his sentences have fewer than 10 words. I wonder if this is what makes him instinctively appeal to so many people at the polls. He keeps his words and statements simple so the texting masses can understand them. He also repeats himself a lot, and that probably drives his point through the drug-addled brain fog most people are in these days. Combine that with the fact that most people are frustrated with Obama's poor administration, and mix, this makes them identify with the most aggressive candidate in the opposing political party. That's very interesting. So now people are analyzing Trump's speech methods. That's very interesting. Because short sentences, by the way, for the uneducated, uncaring, uh, knee-jerk conservatives are very important you think that the knee-jerk liberal is bad but look at the other side of the aisle have you heard of the knee-jerk conservatives or i'm the only one to tell you about it you think that they're all thinkers no not all thinkers they're knee-jerk conservatives just tell them what to think and they'll they'll, they'll regurgitate it but nevertheless look let, let's stop arguing amongst ourselves the country's in trouble the world's in trouble obama has wrecked america and the world and the fact of the matter is only Obama, uh, excuse me, only Trump has stood up and told us what he'll actually do, as clearly as he has about ISIS, about the military. Ted Cruz has good ideas. I just don't trust him. You want to talk about trust? Everything's a personal choice. I don't trust Ted Cruz. I don't trust him for a number of reasons. I don't trust him for the fact that he was born in Canada, he went to Harvard, and suddenly adopted a Texas accent. That's the number one reason I don't trust him. This is a, a weird lineage there that I'm sorry is not as trustworthy to me. And we had enough with someone of uh, 
let us say, a sketchy background in the White House. Let's have an American this time. Let's have a pure American, straight out, no questions about where he was born. I know you don't want to hear it. And I know many of you are cruise bots. I just hope that when Trump wins the nomination, I hope that uh, you will go for Trump. You won't just be a knee-jerk conservative uh, sitting it out because we're at the end of the road here. Emperor Obama has destroyed this country's will to go on. It's basically beaten up. Here you have the assassination of a peaceful activist in Oregon, and there's no outcry in the media. A cop executed a man in Oregon, but because he's white, there's no outcry. There are no reverends. There should be a reverend out there. And I don't mean those type of street rap radicals. We know who they are. They're, they're the worst of the human race. The worst of the human race are the civil rights radicals who pose as reverends. They're the worst, the lowest. They use religion as a weapon. We should have someone along the lines of uh, Falwell Jr. go to Oregon, demand a uh, federal investigation of who killed the, uh, the uh, man. We should have other real, real, real religious people go there. But there's nothing, nothing happening. Apparently there's only one type of lives that matter in America right now because of the brainwashing. But all you want to talk about is this, Trump the Savage, Europe should have listened to me. It's a very good interview. It's up. It's still on michaelsavage.com. So here are the questions that I asked Donald Trump. I have them written out. Maybe I should po up, frame this one because I ty had the, the, the guy who works for me type it up before the show. One, would you appear at the Fox debate if Megyn Kelly is the moderator? I asked them that. That was my first question. I don't care whether you see it on any report or not. I was the one who triggered this. Two, Mr. Trump, Muslim refugees in Europe are raping and murdering. What would you do to reverse Obama's flooding of America with violent and diseased immigrants? Three, Obama just appointed another non-military man to run the Defense Department. We are at war with radical Islam. Would you agree on this show to only appoint a combat experience veteran as Defense Secretary? I can recommend Senator Tom Cotton for the job. Four, Bernie Sanders is a naked far-left radical. Some would say communist. He has been his whole life. I know the type from New York streets, yet he is rising in the polls. What would you say to my audience about Bernie Sanders, and how would you overcome the hordes of poor and immigrants who hate the rich? And I knew we'd only have about 10 minutes, so I saved it for a you know, sh for short few questions. Number six was, Mr. Trump, some people call you a bully. I tell them we need a tough negotiator to beat our enemies. Americans have been wimped down and think we need a nice guy in the Oval Office. How would you appeal to all of these brainwashed fools? I then was surprised that he stayed a little longer and we got into uh, other issues and I said, how important is the Jerry Falwell Jr. endorsement for you? And he answered that one. That was a very big answer, very important, no one heard it. All you are focused on is the, is the newscaster, the showgirl on Fox News. All you're focused on is one of Roger Ailes dancers. It's like the Rockettes to me. When I look at Fox News, I see the Rockettes. Showgirls, they may as well put their arms next to each other and, and do a dance on the stage for Roger Ailes and, and Rupert Murdoch. The showgirls. I'd rather not look at the showgirls. They're nice girls. I'm sure they're very good people. But what's with the heels and the lipstick? That, that's news now? You wonder why their ratings are good? I mean, if you put heels and lipstick on Wolf Blitzer, his ratings would go up. He'd be the first uh, crossover host. And, uh, no, I don't know what his age is. Age doesn't matter anymore. It shouldn't keep him down. If Wolf Blitzer wore heels and lipstick... On, on CNN. His ratings would go up. People would turn it on just to see Wolf Blitzer in a pair of heels and lipstick. The next week he does nails. Again, a 10-point jump. The week after that, another thing, an eye lift, another 10-pointer. Little by little, he could become the biggest hit in the history of, of CNN. What if Chris Cuomo put on uh, heels and lipstick? Do you think his ratings wouldn't go up? And I'm speaking of heels and lipstick, it wouldn't hurt Rachel Madcow to put on a pair of little lipstick now and again. You know, a little lipstick and then heels go a long way, uh, uh, Rachel. Underneath it all, I mean, uh, you must have tried it at some point in your career. Look what it's done for the girls at Fox. KBOI, Zach, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, Dr. Savage, I'd just like to point out that uh, a lot of this stuff that's being said over the Oregon standoff doesn't really get down to the real issue. The real issue is that these people had real grievances against their government, they stood behind the document that this government was founded on, and nobody listened, nobody paid attention, and one of them ended up dead. Yeah, how come Ted Cruz isn't there in solidarity with him since he's such a great constitutionalist? Exactly. 
lot of- No, no, I heard Ted 